first offense I'm going to discuss is called the ordinary course defense. The way this defense works is to compare how you were paid in the three month preference period with how you were paid in a comparison period, typically two or three years prior to the bankruptcy. The point of the defense is to show consistency of dealings as circumstantial evidence that the looming bankruptcy had no impact on how the parties treated each other. It was just business as usual. It's a convoluted and a, I think kind of a weird defense because we need to prove a negative. We are showing the absence, for example, of suddenly ramped up collection pressure or unusually late or early payments that might imply getting special treatment. We're showing consistency to show the absence of any attempt to get an advantage because of a looming bankruptcy. In case you're wondering, very late payments might be evidence of special treatment when many other creditors are not being paid at all, since it begs the question of why that creditor got paid at all. If they got paid so late, maybe the payment was under pressure. Maybe they weren't going to be paid at all. Intention is not considered. So while you may argue that neither the debtor or you intended the late payment was as a preference or a special treatment, it doesn't matter. The court will simply decide whether your conduct was consistent with the past or not. The benefit of the law structure is that it removes the sticky fact issue of intention while still keeping the intent behind the formal law. It's called by most lawyers and judges the ordinary course defense, but does not protect what you might think of normally as ordinary course payments. It's ordinary for a company about to go bankrupt to pay creditors late or by partial payments, but that's not considered ordinary in the context of the ordinary course defense. It's all about consistency. If a company always paid you 60 days late for three years, prior to the bankruptcy and right before the bankruptcy paid you also exactly 60 days late, you probably have a pretty good ordinary course defense. It's about consistency. It's about no change. The law basically tries to protect innocent creditors without having intent as a burden of proof for either side. Also, defendants who can avail themselves of this defense probably did not engage in uh, aggressive collection activity. So the law's rationale discouraging aggressive creditors would not be needed or effective against these creditors that have the ordinary course defense. Why? Because if you're paid regularly both before and during the preference period, there would be no reason for you to suddenly apply special pressure. The second defense I want to talk about is called the subsequent new value defense. It works like this. If you got a preferential payment of $10,000 on one's day, and you shipped $10,000 worth of machines on Thursday on credit, and you were later not paid for the machines, then you can set off the $10,000 loss against the prior preferential payment. The rationale is similar to the ordinary course defense. It's circumstantial evidence of no bad intention. How is, how is it circumstantial evidence of no intent to be preferred? because it would be irrational for a creditor to pressure the debtor for a pre-bankruptcy preferential payment because of a looming bankruptcy and shortly after extend unsecured credit to the very same company. Obviously, rational creditors don't extend unsecured credit to companies they expect to shortly file for bankruptcy. Such a creditor clearly had no knowledge, or the implication is that it had no knowledge of an upcoming bankruptcy, and that creditor received a preferential payment in good faith. To wrap up this video, the preference laws look like they make no sense, but they do have some kind of a rationale. This is, of course, a very simplistic introduction to a very highly litigated but misunderstood part of the bankruptcy world. There are also many other defenses or ways to challenge the plaintiff's allegations. Thank you for watching.